In problem number three, we're asked only to find the real solutions. So this might give us some more options or it might just minimize our time. We've got to kind of wait, take a look at the problem and see what's going on. First, I would solve it for zero. Um, that's the primary solution method, although we'll also talk about the alternate solution method. So if I want zero to be alone, I'm going to rewrite it as 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x plus 5 equals zero. And I would start trying to factor this thing. I can see that the first two have an x squared in common, leaving behind a 2x minus 3. The last two terms only have a 1 in common, leaving behind 2x plus 5, and everything sort of screeches to a, fall, a, a halt because this is not factorable. Once I realize it's not factorable and it's a cubic, which isn't a sum or difference of cubes, I don't have any solution methods available to me other than using my graphing calculator. So there's actually two options. One is to deal with this polynomial. I can put this polynomial into y1, and then I can use second calc zero. So let's take a look at how that approach will work out. I've got my graphing calculator here. I'm going to clear out my work from previous problem. And I'm going to type in this formula, 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x plus 5. And I'm going to go ahead and do zoom standard because I don't know what a good viewing window is. I can see the whole curve. I can see the wiggle in there. Um, and I can see that it only crosses the x-axis in one place, which sort of makes it obvious to me why it was going to be hard to factor. I don't have a lot of integer solutions. I can now, as I look, I can see it looks like it's around negative 1, but maybe not exactly. So I'm going to do second calc 0, which is option number 2. And I've got to do my left bound and right bound. So I'll go to the left of that x-intercept and then to the right of that x-intercept, and I don't really care about guessing, so I do an extra enter, and I get the point um, negative 0.84, approximately, comma zero. So I've got the point negative 0.84, comma zero. So since I'm only looking for real solutions, I can see that x is approximately equal to negative 0.84. Now, if I had had reason to believe that I wasn't going to be able to factor in the first place, there's actually an alternate method. The alternate method is to put the left side of the problem into x1 and the right side of the problem, I'm sorry, into y1, and the right side of the problem into y2. When I do that, I'm not going to be looking for the zeros of the function because I'm not actually graphing the real function. I'm graphing it as if it's a system of equations, which means I'm going to end up using second calc intersect to see where those two different functions intersect with each other. So let's just take a quick peek at that in the calculator as well. So you can see that that yields the same answer. So I go to y equals um, the left side. Actually, I'm just going to clear this whole thing out. The left side will be the 2x cubed plus 5, and the right side of the problem will be my y2, so 3x squared minus 2x. When I go to look at my graph, I'm going to see that I have a cubic and a parabola that are kind of running into each other, and I can see that they only run into each other in one spot. If I do second calc and I choose intersect, I'm going to go, um, that's my first curve, that's my second curve. Again, I don't care about guessing, I just do an extra equal sign. Notice the x value of the intersection is the very same number that I got when I did second calc 0 before. So that point, negative 0.84 comma 3.81, only the x value is relevant, it still gives me that x is approximately equal to 
negative 0.84. So both of those solutions methods can work for this type of problem. All right, finally in this note sheet, we're asked to um, solve a little word problem. And it's kind of a silly, silly problem. It's not very practical, but we do see stuff like this pop up in the SATs or on math team events. So it is helpful to know how to solve. It says, what are three consecutive even integers whose product is four times their sum? Okay, first of all, three consecutive even integers. So like two, four, six, or 22, 24, 26, or even negative eight, negative six, negative four, just any three integers um, that all are even and in a row. So if you think about that, each number is two bigger than the number before it. So the three integers would be x, x plus two, and x plus four. Each of them is two bigger than the one before. If you really wanted to, you don't have to have x be the smallest one. If you started with x as the middle one, the first one is two smaller, the second one is two bigger. That would be another way you could define it. Or if you really wanted to, you could start with the biggest number and go down from there, you could subtract. I usually find this is the simplest option, but any of those three sets work out. It says their product. Well, remember product means multiply. So multiply the three numbers together. Is is equals four times their sum. So four times the sum, adding them together. So now I can see I've got a big mess. This isn't a factored form. If I'm going to solve, I've got to get zero on one side. So I've got to do some multiplying here. If I multiply the binomials on the left, I've got x squared plus 6x plus 8. And then if I distribute, I have x cubed plus 6x squared plus 8x. On the right-hand side, first I'd want to find that sum. I've got 3x's and 6, and then I could distribute. So I have 12x plus 24. I now need all the x's on one side. So I've got x cubed plus 6x squared. When I subtract 12x, I'm going to get a negative 4x, and then I'm going to subtract that 24 equals to 0. If I can factor, I always want to. So I'm going to check and see if I can. I could factor out an x squared from the first two terms. And I could factor out a negative 4 from the second two, and I see that that is factorable because I got the same binomial twice. So I've got x plus 6 is their GCF, x squared minus 4 is the remaining term, and I can see that that's factorable. So I have x plus 6 times x plus 2 times x minus 2. Now be careful. A lot of times students want to tell me that the three numbers are x equals negative 6, negative 2, and positive 2. But think about that for a minute. First of all, those are not consecutive even integers. So it doesn't even make sense as a final answer. But in addition, notice those are all x values. And x is just, whoops, x is just the smallest number. So there's actually three sets of consecutive even integers which all satisfy the parameters of this problem. So one set starts at negative six. So negative six, negative four, and negative two. That's one set of three numbers. But I also have a set starting at negative two. So negative two, zero, and two. And I have a third set starting at two. So two, four, and six. There are three sets of consecutive even integers which all satisfy the parameters of the problem. I need to make sure I give all three possibilities.